Here's a sound I would say 87% of you probably hate. Car alarms are the worst. Like the actual worst. They come in at number five on Time's top 10 list of most annoying sounds of all time. But you might have noticed that you don't hear them as often as you once did. Why is that? To understand why car alarms devolved into an ineffective annoyance, we first need some context for how they came to be in the first place. And why we thought sound, instead of any other method, was the best way to prevent car theft. This probably seems like an obvious example of necessity being the mother of invention. And it was. Look at these early cars. There were no doors and therefore no locks. Anybody could just jump in and drive away at any moment. So pretty early on, people began thinking of ways to protect their automobiles. The earliest known attempts to create a car alarm was by an unnamed mechanician serving time in a Denver jail. Popular Mechanics covered the story in its April 1913 issue, citing that the device would emit siren-like calls for help, filling the thief with terror. The sound, being novel and only used in a few cars in those early days, would draw attention, hopefully deterring the thief. However, the first patent for an automobile alarm system wasn't issued until a few years later to St. George Evans and E.B. Birkenbuehl. Their device required the driver to enter a three-digit code to enable an alarm, enter the code after parking, and that set electricity to divert from the battery to the horn. Enter it again when you get back in, and that would release the pins, diverting the electricity back to starting the car. This number pad would be hidden, somewhere only the driver would know to look for it. It would be concealed in hopes that a thief wouldn't see it. That way, when they jumped in to steal it like it were any other car, starting it without entering the code, the horn would blare its loud siren, alerting you or any nearby do-gooders of a thief on the loose. The horn would continue blaring until stopped by the owner of the car or the battery died whichever happened first. In the best of circumstances, the loud noise would send chills down the thieves' spine, because most criminals work in silence and this outs them completely. They'd be deterred and run away. Though car alarms have improved from a technical standpoint, the idea behind them has stayed mostly the same. The biggest difference comes in how modern cars detect that they're being thieved. Instead of recognizing an improper code, Newer car alarms are set to activate whenever they detect movement or jostling when the car doors are locked. If you think in like the 60s and 70s, that was more of a widespread issue at that time. You could kind of use a screwdriver, you know, to go in and, and open doors and start a car, hotwire them. They were, they were really simple back then. And so I think that as technology started to become more pervasive, you know, the late 70s and the 80s, that's when you start to see these, you know, digital uh, technology-based car alarms. These smart systems were not very intelligent. The thing with these automated devices is that they're often set to be extremely sensitive, which is great in case a thief is really precise. Even the slightest touch will make it go off. But also, even the slightest touch will make it go off. An abnormally forceful gust of wind triggered. Suddenly loud music with deep bass vibrations that rattle the car? Triggered. Somebody accidentally touching it after falling off a building when their Spider-Man powers don't work? Triggered. There's definitely an era of oversensitivity. And this sensitivity was the first problem with car alarms. Since the slightest provocation sets them off, they go off virtually all the time. A study by the New York legislature and a few other experts estimated that 95 to 99 percent of all car alarms in the city were set off by vibrations of passing trucks or glitches in the car's electrical system, not thieves. The oversensitivity of car alarms has resulted in an unexpected consequence, our desensitization to them. And that spells trouble. 
Instead of helping avoid carjackings and theft, the sound of sirens actually gave carjackers auditory coverage to commit more crimes. According to a New York Magazine article all about noise pollution, there have been cases of people intentionally setting off car alarms to mask the sound of smashing the window of the car, allowing them to break in. But let's rewind and take a closer look at that scene from Spider-Man 2, because it reveals something surprising. After Peter Parker realizes he made a terrible mistake, he falls and smashes into not one, but two cars. And yet, no alarms go off. Then, as he gets up and walks away, he just leans on one slightly for support, and that causes the alarm to go off. While this was probably done for comedic effect, it also highlights the hidden truth that not all cars have car alarms. In fact, car alarms or any anti-theft precautions aren't a federally required component of any car. A spokesperson from Toyota told The Atlantic that alarms aren't standard in their vehicles. Many alarms are installed aftermarket. In the 80s and the old days, I think it was more so the space of, you know, the stereo shop. You know, you'd have these, these aftermarket shops that would like tint your windows and put in the subwoofer. If you're going to put in a high-end audio system, right, you, you obviously want to have a good alarm. So it was kind of all folded in together. But there just wasn't really the intelligence or the logic beyond just making a racket. Throughout the 80s and 90s, as vehicle technology improved, anger towards alarms was reaching a fever pitch. But then, a solution appeared. So onboard diagnostics started being required sometime in the mid-90s, which that allowed all the engine components and various, all the sensors and, you know, um, processors in the vehicle that were starting to become more common at that time in the mid-90s. It allowed them to talk to each other. In 1997, Ford installed the first RFID ignition immobilizer in their Mustangs. This meant that the key had an RFID chip which sent out a signal to the car when it was in the ignition. That allowed it to start up. Without the key, the car either wouldn't start or wouldn't activate the fuel pump. So you had to have a handshake to start the car. That all the different systems inside the car could talk to each other to say, okay, well, there's unauthorized access, so I'm not gonna start the engine. Um, and, you know, and so on and so forth. This meant that you couldn't steal the car if you hotwired it, or even if you made a copy of the key. The car was effectively immobile, unless you had a key with the corresponding RFID chip. This technology is quieter and far more effective than using an alarm, because it actually immobilizes the car instead of just emitting siren-like calls for help. As cars have continued to evolve, RFID immobilizers have become the standard. Of course, that doesn't mean that the car can't be stolen. Carjackings still happen, but the process is more sophisticated and involves hacking the internal computer of the car. Even so, carjackings dropped 96% when comparing 1990 to 2013, according to the New York Times. Immobilizers don't stop people from smashing your window and stealing stuff out of your car, though. There are solutions for that, like anti-shatter film, but they don't really relate to alarms, so we're not going to discuss them in this video. But immobilizers are just part of the equation. The decrease in alarms has more to do with, well, people just getting fed up. And I do remember, you know, reading and hearing about, I think there was a number of consumer advocacy groups that worked towards suing some of these aftermarket alarm manufacturers for trying to prevent some of the false alarms because it was becoming such a nuisance in that time when they were taking off. Due to this outrage, manufacturers became increasingly worried and tides have turned. So car alarm manufacturers changed the way alarms were made, making them less sensitive. Nowadays, you can shake a car all you want, play music near it, and have the loudest trucks in the world drive by it, and most cars wouldn't make a sound. The only way most car alarms go off now is if the doors are locked and somebody tries to open it from the inside. The thought is that if somebody were trying to steal the car or steal something from the car, they'd probably smash the window and try to open it up from the inside. So alarms haven't gone away. 
they've just changed shape to become less noticeable. Thanks to backlash from advocacy groups and the evolution of technology that has created better lines of defense against car theft. You have these layers, right? And, and the first layer was sound, and that was the annoying layer, right? But it's sometimes still required. The second layer is the logic within the car, the local ability of the car to allow itself to be activated if the customer is starting it. And then the third layer is, is the connectivity. Now with connected cars, right, which is my area within Hyundai, you can get notifications, um, you know, almost on, on like any parameter of the vehicle. So there's all these layers of intelligence now that are in place that are just so much beyond, you know, just a loud siren sound that it's just changed the game in that way. So if anything, like alarms are here, you know, and they're better than they ever were in the past. They're um, just maybe less noticeable because they're just so much smarter. And part of alarms becoming smarter also means shifting the perspective of what the purpose of a car alarm can be. You still will hear false alarms, but most likely it's for a good reason. We also have something called rear occupancy alert, which it tracks the rear door opening and closing. And so if at the beginning of your journey, you opened your rear door, um, assumably to put a child in the back, and at the end of your journey, you lock the vehicle and walk away without opening or closing the rear door again, and then the motion sensor detects motion in the vehicle, the alarm will go off. So that's just you know another example of what could trigger an alarm, but for a very good reason, right? And so I think as we move into the future, there's going to be more and more of these use cases where, you know, your car is trying to tell you something. It may not be that it's trying to get stolen, but that there's another good reason that it's, you know, yelling at you for whatever the case may be. In this case, you know, a very good one to make sure your child is, is not stuck in the vehicle. Do you think car alarms will ever be phased out for good? Sound off in the comments below. Did you find this story alarming? Don't forget to like and subscribe. And talking about alarms, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified for any of our future videos.